If you die with loads of unspent money, you are doing it wrong. That is the core message of this book, Die With Zero. How often have you encountered advice advocating the conventional path of hard work, diligent saving, and the pursuit of a tranquil retirement? But what if these conventional wisdoms are flawed? What if adhering to the mainstream leads to a life squandered? This book will illustrate why the prevalent wisdom on money, wealth, and life contentment is misguided. Uncover strategies to optimize your time on this planet and allocate your finances in a manner that cultivates joy for both yourself and your loved ones. From inheritance for your children, pension allocations, travel and careers, this book unveils the key to a life enriched with memories, wisdom, and peace of mind. Within these summaries, we will explain why your children should inherit while you are still alive, the ideal age to chase your dreams and how to transform your life experiences into valuable investments. You can make more money, but you can never make more time. John received the devastating news of terminal cancer at the age of 35. In response, his wife Erin chose to resign from her job, and they savored the time they had remaining together. Following John's passing, Erin expressed gratitude for the cherished memories they created. Though this narrative may sound simplistic and extreme, it serves as a reminder of a profound truth. Our time on Earth is limited, requiring careful consideration in its use. Unfortunately, the common focus on limited resources often neglects the significance of time itself, potentially leading to a life lived without purpose. The fundamental message is clear, wealth is nothing without health. While one can likely increase their financial wealth, time is irreplaceable. Treating time as infinite often leads to deferred gratification. Consider a 30-year-old anticipating retirement for future adventures in Italy, learning to water ski, or embarking on a global journey. While this approach may seem reasonable, delaying such experiences until later years may result in diminished enjoyment or worse, the inability to realize these aspirations. The underlying reason is straightforward, wealth loses meaning without good health. Even with sufficient resources and time, enjoying certain activities in old age may prove challenging. So why doesn't the 30-year-old embark on these experiences now, in the prime of life? Like many, he has been conditioned to prioritize saving money over spending it. The dividends from your experiences are a valuable investment. While we commonly associate investments with financial endeavors like stocks or property, what if you could invest more than just money? What if your experiences could also be considered investments? Consider spending $10,000 on a trip to Europe. Throughout your journey, you forge new friendships, learn about diverse cultures, and broaden your horizons. Although this adventure doesn't promise a financial return, it transforms you into a more enriched individual. But how can such a personal journey be deemed an investment, especially when you won't recoup the $10,000? To comprehend this, it's crucial to recognize that money isn't the sole dividend of value. Your experiences yield valuable memory dividends. Every time you revisit a photograph or share stories about your European odyssey, you relive pleasurable memories. These memories continue to enrich your life indefinitely. While the recollection may not match the joy of the original experience, a life filled with diverse and rich experiences accumulates small dividends, creating a wealth of memories rather than just monetary value on paper. If you're contemplating delaying a significant journey to focus on building financial reserves, consider this, embarking on your travels earlier provides more years to enjoy the memories. Live fully or work without reward. Imagine if your employer asked you to work for free, most likely, you'd decline. Yet, millions of Americans find themselves effectively working without financial gain for years. Consider Elizabeth, a 45-year-old woman without children, earning an annual net income of $49,000. Despite spending only $33,000 of her earnings, she diligently allocates the remaining $16,000 to her pension and savings account. When Elizabeth retires at 65, her total net worth, including savings and home equity, amounts to $770,000. At the time of her death, Elizabeth leaves behind $130,000 in her savings account. While this may seem substantial, let's delve deeper into her financial scenario. During her working years, Elizabeth earned approximately $19 per hour. The $130,000 she leaves equates to over 6,000 hours of labor, roughly two and a half years of work. However, since she won't be able to use this money after her death, 
in essence, she worked for free during those hours. The key message is clear, live fully or work without reward. Could Elizabeth have approached her finances differently? An alternative method is suggested by the life cycle hypothesis theory. According to the life cycle hypothesis, the optimal way to manage money is to increase spending between age 40 to 60. This implies that your expenses should increase during those golden years, resulting in a dwindling net worth as you age, ultimately reaching zero upon death. Acknowledging the uncertainty of life expectancy, the life cycle hypothesis theory advises predicting the remaining years one has. For Elizabeth, this would have involved spending her wealth gradually throughout her life instead of letting it accumulate in her account. As illustrated, the money she left behind represented 6,000 hours of labor, hours that could have been invested in creating experiences and cherished memories. It emphasizes the potential for a richer and more fulfilling life during those 6,000 hours. Dying with zero doesn't imply squandering your children's inheritance. While the concept of leaving no wealth behind might seem appealing, it raises concerns for parents with children. Many wish to secure an inheritance for their offspring, questioning the ethical nature of utilizing all funds solely for personal enjoyment. In essence, dying with zero doesn't mean spending your children's inheritance. To grasp this perspective, consider how you distinguish between your wealth and that intended for your children. Suppose you aim to leave your daughter $50,000, envision this sum is no longer yours, but your daughter's. Once this distinction is made, managing your wealth becomes more straightforward. The recommendation isn't to retain the $50,000 until your demise, but rather to pass on the inheritance while you're still alive. Economic research indicates that the majority of Americans inherit money only after their parents pass away, typically at the age of 60. However, it makes more sense to transfer wealth earlier, benefiting your children when they are younger. For instance, providing your daughter with the money at 30 allows her to make more impactful use of it. Whether contributing to a family home or investing in enriching experiences, the funds can significantly improve her life. Despite these advantages, some parents hold on to their children's inheritance, often due to concerns about potential health issues in later years. It's essential to consider that obtaining long-term care insurance is a more cost-effective alternative than saving for a hypothetical worst-case scenario. This approach not only facilitates early inheritance for your children but also ensures financial security for your own future. Embrace change as it's inevitable and seize every opportunity. Life unfolds with a series of inevitable changes, akin to experiencing multiple deaths within one lifetime. While we physically die only once, various aspects of our identity undergo transformation over time. Consider the author's example, when his daughter, once loved watching movies with him, suddenly lost interest, it marked a subtle yet profoundly impactful shift in the author's life. He transitioned from being a parent to a small child, to a father to an increasingly independent individual with distinct interests. Change is inevitable, so grasp every opportunity. A part of the author died with each significant life transition, much like the carefree, childless version of himself upon becoming a father or the teenager he once was. This concept extends to how one allocates money, as each version of oneself comes with unique hobbies and passions. Consider your life as a series of time buckets, each spanning 5 to 10 years. For instance, if you're presently 30, you can divide your remaining time into several more buckets. After this, envision all the experiences you wish to have throughout your life and determine the age at which each would bring the most enjoyment. Assign each experience to the corresponding time bucket. This exercise provides insight into how much of your wealth you should allocate for each period of your life. Acknowledging that each chapter eventually closes allows you to capitalize on the opportunities within each phase and spend your money judiciously. You can buy this life-changing book for under $14 on Amazon. Please see the link below. And please take a second to subscribe to our channel. It's free and helps us to create more content like this. All right, back to the video. Accumulate just enough for retirement and not a penny more. While we've explored the advantages of approaching retirement with minimal savings, the fear of facing retirement with insufficient funds is a valid concern for many. The question arises, how much is truly enough to retire? To determine this, evaluate your net worth by totaling all your assets and subtracting your debts. The resulting figure represents your net worth. Here is the trick, save enough for retirement but not a cent more. For most Americans, net worth tends to increase over their lifetimes. 
Early on, student debt and entry-level jobs may limit financial standing. However, with time, debt is often paid off, better employment opportunities arise, and home ownership becomes a possibility. While continuous growth and net worth might seem synonymous with life success, there is a point where it can become excessive. This occurs when accumulated wealth is sufficient to sustain a comfortable life without the need to work. Consider an example where an annual survival budget is $12,000, and one expects to live another 40 years, resulting in a retirement net worth goal of $480,000. In reality, retirement can be achieved with less due to accruing interest on money and assets. Approximately 70% of the estimated amount may be all that's needed to retire, as interest rates can contribute to the remainder. To optimize your time on Earth, it's advisable not to let your net worth exceed the necessary amount for survival. Once surpassed, consider reducing wealth instead of continually building it up. This could involve allocating resources towards memorable experiences or easing back on work commitments. The repercussions of risks intensify with age. You may have encountered the saying, the bigger the risk, the greater the reward, but in reality, taking risks is comparable to backpacking around the world, more fulfilling when done in youth. Why is it advantageous to embrace boldness earlier in life? Consider a high-risk scenario, such as aspiring to be a Hollywood star. To transform this dream into reality, you relocate to Los Angeles, attending auditions while working odd jobs to make ends meet. The older you get, the more serious the consequences of risks become. If you embark on your acting dream at 21, the consequences of potential failure are minimal. Youth provides the flexibility to pivot and build an entirely different career if needed. At this age, you face an asymmetric risk, where the potential rewards of success far outweigh the downsides of failure. In fact, not pursuing your dreams at 21 becomes a greater gamble, risking a lifetime of regret and what-ifs. However, as age advances, the dynamics change. Imagine quitting your regular job, moving to Los Angeles, and pursuing acting at 35. By this time, you likely have an established career, a family, and possibly children. The consequences of failure take on a different magnitude. It's evident that the downsides of risk worsen with age, but the upsides of success also diminish. Consider breaking into acting at 55, the time to enjoy your stardom would be considerably shorter than for a younger individual. The lesson derived from this is to seize the moment. If there's a burning desire, waiting for more financial security or ideal circumstances may not be the optimal strategy. Life and opportunities are finite, but the potential of your dreams is boundless. Final takeaway. The main takeaway from these insights is to avoid dedicating your life solely to saving for an uncertain future. While financial wealth may accumulate with age, your health and willingness to explore new experiences tend to decline. It's advisable to judiciously use disposable income in your youth to pursue adventurous dreams and embark on mind-expanding travels. Always bear in mind that nothing is eternal, including life itself, so prioritize happiness over an endlessly growing bank balance. Challenge the conventional notion of the golden years tied to retirement, typically envisioned after the age of 65. Contrary to popular belief, these golden years often emerge earlier, roughly between the ages of 50 and 65. During this period, individuals often possess more time and resources than in their younger days while maintaining relatively good health. Rather than waiting for retirement, seize the opportunity as soon as you have the golden combination of money, time, and health. Initiate the pursuit of all the things you love without delay. If you like this video then you are going to love this video about a book called Millionaire Fastlane. It's about proven strategies on how to build a business that makes money fast.